Hi, Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Here to take a look at the new Titleist TS1 driver. Really excited to take a look. We've got a special guest, Dick Bluston, um, great customer of, of ours. Uh, Dick, tell me about your game and why you think maybe the new Titleist driver might be a, you know, a good candidate for you. Well, I've been playing golf for 65 years and there's a common denominator out there I've found that as you get older, your club head speed starts to diminish. And that, I'm a perfect example of that. So I've been looking for something that's lighter, that I can actually try to increase my distance, especially off the tee. And uh, today we're trying this uh, new driver by Titleist with the 40 gram shaft. And uh, I'm, I'm optimistic that maybe we're onto something. We might be onto something. I know, I know the new TS1 driver is designed for players looking to search for a little bit more speed. It is a little bit lighter might be a great opportunity for us to maybe pick up a few yards for you. So why don't we uh, get after it? Hit a few shots with the new TS1 driver and we'll take a look at some numbers. Okay, bye. That one there was at just a little bit more solid. Uh, that felt good. That felt good? That felt better, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It definitely feels lighter. Definitely feels lighter. I know yeah. we were talking just briefly kind of off camera about club speed. We were talking about trying to possibly find a way to get you to increase a little bit more distance, increase a Correct. little bit club speed. The new Titleist TS1 is a great option. Essentially, it is a little bit lighter club head. Um, the golf shaft also is, is fairly light. So this shaft we're hitting is 40 grams. Uh, so that's the R Speeder R2 golf, golf shaft. So it's a little bit lighter. Idea behind that is just to help increase club speed a little bit. That's what I'm looking for. That's and what I, we're all looking for, yeah. Right, exactly. More club speed gives us more potential for distance. <laughs> Sounds solid. It does feel solid. How does it look compared to your current driver? It looks good. <laughs> the sound feels good. I like the sound. It doesn't sound crazy loud, but it definitely, you know, you can, you can hear it pop off the club face right. pretty nicely. Feel, that's yeah. a good description. Yep. It feels like you get a good pop. Yep. That was nice and solid there. That felt real good. Yep. Okay, hit one more for me, and then I want to take a look at some numbers and just explain a couple of things to you. Okay. That okay. last one actually had the best spin rate associated with it, and that's why it went a little bit further. Right. We noticed the spin rate was, you know, 1700 on that, on that last one. Right. If we look at all these other shots that you were hitting, um, we'll notice here the spin rate was, you know, hovering around about the, the high 2000s and even in the, the 3000 mark right there. So that was just telling me, you know, it was spinning just a, you know, a little bit too much occasionally. Yeah. A lot of that definitely could come down to hit location a little bit there too. I noticed, so we've got some numbers up here with your current driver as well, um, but we did notice that the smash factor was 1.48. When you were hitting yours, we noticed a lot of kind of 1.49s. So it's just telling me that hit location was just a little, kind of sli slightly off. Uh -huh. um, if we were going to kind of compare the, the two of them though, so as I mentioned, we do have some, some numbers up here associated with your current gamer. Um, we'll notice the club speed with a slightly lighter golf club. We got 0.6 mile an hour, so we got a little bit faster club speed. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, possibly that could be related to the lighter golf head or the lighter golf shaft to give us a little bit more p potential distance, essentially. Right. Um, so that's excellent, the fact that we can get any more club speed. I know you were talking about how do I hit the ball further. You know, you talked about going to the gym, possibly doing Pilates or anything like that. A lighter golf club, a lighter golf shaft will help you with that. I think so. Uh, ball speed. So we'll notice the ball speed number, 124 with yours, 125 with, with the tightest. So more ball speed usually is going to equal more distance as well. Um, your smash factor was exactly the same, 148, 148, compared to, com compared to your driver. Um, if we look at the launch angle, which is kind of interesting, you, your current driver is set at 10 degrees. I have this one set at A1, 10.5 in the, in the Titleist TS1 driver, so it is half a degree um, more loft. You were talking about having that ball feeling like it's just kind of falling out of the sky and not going as far. 
Right. So we talked about maybe going back to the 10.5 with your driver, but we'll notice it did launch quite a bit higher than your driver alone. Not half a degree more, it was essentially almost, two. it was, it was, yeah, two degrees higher. So that's, that's important. We also didn't really notice that spin rate go up on average compared to your driver either. So you'll notice 2,600, 2,500, we're talking 100 RPMs, but still within the, you know, the two to 3,000 mark where we want to be. What's really interesting, if you notice here, is the peak height. So yeah. Minnesota, you know, this, this, this year has been a, it's been a brutal, brutal spring. We've had a lot of rain. Ball doesn't run out very far when, it, when the course is really wet. So you'll notice that you're with the TS1 driver, with it being a little bit lighter, possibly help getting the ball up in the air a little bit more. It was 18 feet higher in the air. That's quite, quite a big difference. And so that's why the ball was, you know, carrying a little bit further overall. Right. So that's really kind of interesting then to know, because I know you were talking about how your driver does kind of fall out of the sky a little bit, feel like you're not, maybe not getting as much, maximized as much as you possibly can. Whether that's associated with that half a degree more, I don't think half a degree would give you 18 more feet. I think it's a little bit to do with the driver as, as well. So that's kind of interesting to see that it was carrying a little bit further as well. So that's all important. Um, stuff to note there. Right. Um, you said it felt pretty good. What about the look? What about when you're looking down at it? The look is fine. The look, I think is, this is a 460 head. The head looks good compared to all the other ones. It looks clean. Yep. Uh, the head looks clean and uh, yeah, um, no, I think the head looks great. Um, I'm used to a bigger head. We got your carry distance over 200 yards versus yours being at one, 190, 195. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's a bonus, so from a little lighter golf shaft or a little lighter club head, that does, that's a bonus. So we definitely mm -hmm. picked up a little bit right there. We definitely have different options here to play around with this, this driver here too, mm -hmm. that we can, we can definitely do. So I mentioned adjustments. So one thing I did notice if we look at this left screen up here is, you know, with, with the tightless driver, we're actually leaving it out to the right a little bit further than with your current driver. When you're playing outside, you typically hit the ball fairly straight? I would say yes. It's typically fairly straight, because yeah. we noticed the white circle that was yours, it was pretty much right down the middle. What we noticed here with the tightless driver was just a little bit out to the right, maybe just a little bit harder to kind of turn over. So I want to play around with maybe a little more upright setting to see if we can get that thing a little bit turned over. So if you want to pass me that driver. So I wasn't aware, you can take the setting and make it more upright? We can, yes. So with, uh, with tightless, with uh, the, the settings that we, we, we can change, we have essentially, go, we can go more upright, we can go up and loft, and we can go down loft. We can also go a little bit flatter as well. Right. But I just want to play around with the idea. I just yeah. want to see what happens if we, if we go a little bit upright to try and limit that miss to the right that we're seeing with mm -hmm. that driver. The great news was, though, when you were missing it a little further to the right, is it was staying in the air. So it was carrying a little bit further overall. Mm -hmm. So currently, we were just first testing at A1. I'm actually just going to switch this to A2. So I'm just going to show you right here. There's 16 different settings we can change it to. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to switch this to A2. So essentially, this now is going to play a degree and a half more upright. OK. And still at 10 and a half? Still at 10 and a half, yeah. But the club now, I thought the club felt a little flat. A little bit flat? OK. Yeah. All right. Well, let's just see how this one compares. Now this is slightly up, it's one and a half up. One and a half up. Okay. Okay, so give me a few four more shots here and we'll take a look and see if anything changes. Okay. That one sounded solid. Better. There we go. Nice. Yeah, that was really solid. They quit going to the right, didn't they? A little bit, so it's brought it back a little bit closer to the middle here. Those last two have been excellent. All right, very nice. Okay, so that one turned over just a little bit more. We notice if we look on the screen, yes, it did go a little bit straighter overall. Uh, you had two here that did carry further than anything else, so that was kind of these two dots right there, and they were, they were fairly straight. When we had it a little bit more upright, you would notice that the spin rate dropped. So notice how the spin rate was our average was 2,000 RPMs. Mm -hmm. With yours, it was 2,500, and the other one was 2,600. 
I'm okay with that bull flying a little bit higher in the air if that bull is spinning less. That wind is not going to affect, um, affect it as much. Okay. What's also interesting is once we actually started to turn it over a little bit more, mm -hmm. we take a look at the peak height. So yours is at 10 degrees. We were at 10.5 right here in the standard setting. That flying thing was flying 90 feet in the air, so it was flying even higher than your driver. We look now, we put it a little more upright position, now it's flying 78 feet in the air. So it was back down to that trajectory that you like to see a little bit kind of lower bull flight, but it was now spinning less, so now it's gonna roll out a little bit and go a little bit further overall. Mm -hmm. Smash factor with all of them, you know, really, really solid overall. Uh, we may have started to possibly get a little bit fatigued here as, as well, but when we're getting him the last couple, it could be a little to do with why you weren't hitting it quite as solid. So Dick, we got the chance to hit a few different uh, setups with the, the new TS1 driver. What did you think? Well, first of all, I like the looks of the head. Yep. I think you got to look it down at the ball, and when the head's behind the ball, if you don't like the looks, that's not a very good start. What made you like the look of the head? It just seemed to be a clean-looking head, square-looking face, 10 and a half degrees, I think we were hitting. Yep, um, we were at 10 and a half. Yep. I like the shall we say, the, uh, not used to the lightness of the shaft, but I think over time I could get used to it. And I think the numbers basically said that this driver is going further and as straight as my old driver. It was. So we did have to make a slight adjustment when you were first hitting it in the A1 setting, which is kind of the standard 10 and a half degree setting. Mm -hmm. We did notice compared to your driver, we were missing it just a little bit to the right. What I did is essentially I made the club a degree and a half further upright, and that brought us back a little bit straighter. The great news is it actually brought the spin rate down as well because the ball was now drawing a little bit. So now we're actually getting same carry distance but now the ball was rolling out a little bit further I know you mentioned the concern you know was when you hit the ball a little high sometimes you can get caught up in the wind well now it's just flying a little bit lower but still carrying the same distance and rolling out so it gave really good numbers that's yeah. what I'm looking for that's what we're looking yeah. for we want yeah. great carry distance but we want to keep that spin rate down start calling you the dog golf club doctor <laughs> <laughs> right well Dick thank you so much for coming in we really appreciate it my pleasure it. and yep. I appreciate everything you've done yep so thank I you. think uh, if you want to come in and take a look at you know, the TS1 driver, come, come in and do a, a club fitting with us at Second Swing. Um, you can always schedule a fitting online or give us a call at one of our stores. I would recommend it.